The following video features a model kit that is pre-production and may not be indicative of final retail versions of the product. It was also received free of charge for the purpose of review and all opinions expressed remain my own. Thanks to Beacon Models for sending this out to me. Almost a year ago I discovered that there was going to be a new model company entering the scene, that being Beacon Models. These guys were hoping to get into the 1 to 144th scale market with a range of aircraft collections, starting with the Spitfire and BF-109 as used in the Battle of Britain. A Kickstarter campaign was set up, and despite not being particularly well known, there was considerable interest. Sadly, the campaign was unsuccessful, with Beacon reaching just under half of their target goal to get these products into production. But that was not to be the end of the story. Due to various other avenues and some sheer commitment on behalf of the people behind the company, they decided not to give up. And now, after almost a year, their website is up and running and taking pre-orders for the upcoming release of their first kits. If you've been following their social media, you'll know that a lot of work has been put in to getting the model kits ready for mass production, and to that end, they recently received the very first samples of their BF-109 sprues. I'm very grateful that they considered sending this out to me for review, because I'm pretty sure only three of these sprues exist at the moment, and there is a reason for this. The manufacturer of the Tauling had a small issue with one of their machines, and the moulds were out of alignment. I mean, it's hardly noticeable, but it was enough for the Tauling company to scrap those moulds and want to redo it. Fair play to them for striving for excellence. In the meantime, Bearing that in mind, let's take a look at what we can expect to see from this Beacon Models BF109E model kit in 1 to 144th scale. At the moment, there aren't any instructions. The closest thing I've got is this exploded diagram, so when I come to build this in the future, I'll have to make sure I pay attention to this. But I'm sure that future releases will have some paper instructions. I've been sent an early sample of the decal sheet too, which again, I'm assured will be improved upon prior to the release of the kit and might be printed by cartograph, but if I'm honest, these ones are pretty good and I've seen considerably worse from kits that are already on the market. The big sheet consists of generic transfers, which should allow you to depict specific aircraft of your own choosing, if there is a particular one you want to do. There are also some two-part, historically accurate decals on there too, for the people out there who really care about that. I've also been sent a small sheet which will allow me to depict an actual aircraft as used in the Battle of Britain, if I want to. Anyways, let's look at the plastic parts. First up, I'm going to look at the canopy. I've been sent a couple which at this moment in time are 3D printed in clear resin. This is simply due to the fact that the mould for the clear parts haven't been made yet, so this is just a representation of what they will look like. The print lines have made the canopy a little foggy, but there is a good representation of the frames there, so I imagine the injection moulded versions will look very good indeed. Moving on, let's look at the sprues that have been injection moulded, and there are two of them moulded in a dark grey plastic. Taking a look at this one first, it features a wing for the early machine gun fitted aircraft, and all those letter holes are for different bombs and things. Moving up, there are the tail surfaces, air intakes, and even a tropical filter for later variants of the 109E. Next, we can see the landing gear covers, some bombs, and even drop tanks. Beacon Models really likes to give you quite a choice of options on this kit. Finally, we are met with the left side fuselage half. A tiny amount of flash in the cockpit area, but the details are really good, and I can even see a hint of rivets on the tail. Flipping over, there is even a little bit of cockpit detail. I've seen less detail in 148 scale models. As we come back down the sprue, the cockpit area on the right of the screen shows a good representation of the pilot's chair. Finally, the underside of the wings. Again, quite a lot of detail on there for such a small kit. Let's move on to the other sprue. This time we have a wing which is fitted with cannons. Similar in design of the previous sprue, it allows you to make up different versions of the 109. Moving up, there are the landing gear covers for the lowered wheels, the mounts for the underslung bombs, the wheels, and the nose cowling. Next, there is the propeller, control panel, some other small details, and two different spinners for the nose. The ones without the cutouts for the props, as circled on this image, 
let you put a circle of clear plastic and stick it on to look like the propeller is spinning, if you want. Pretty cool idea that I don't think I've seen before in a kit. And finally, the other fuselage half. Again, very similar to the other one, with a little bit of flash, but generally okay. Again, flipping over to the other side, there is more cockpit detail on the inside of the fuselage. Moving down, I quite like the details on the wheels and the central bomb mount. Finally, the underside of the wings again. The cannons look a little bit thick, but I'm sure they could be sanded down a touch. Oh, and what plane isn't complete without a pilot? At the moment, there are no pilots actually included in the kit, and I'm not sure they have plans to include them, but a standing pilot can be downloaded from the Beacon Model website if you sign up to their newsletter. You get both an RAF and Luftwaffe 1, and they come in 1 to 144, 172, and 148 scale, so great for those little dioramas. The one I have here was printed on my El Gumars Pro 2 at home, and as it's so small, it didn't take that long to print. I'm actually really impressed with how well it came out, given that I don't have much experience in 3D printing at the moment. I did print them at the other sizes as well, and I think they look really good, particularly the larger ones, because you can see those little details. But yeah, let's recap what you can expect to find in this kit. Depending on your choice at the point of purchase, you can get either generic decals or some for specific paint schemes, a clear canopy, and a couple of really nice moulded sprues featuring parts for quite a variety of different BF109s, depending on what you want to do with the kit. Oh, and did you notice that problem I mentioned earlier about the misalignment of the moulds? I'll crack out my macro lens. Now, bearing in mind this is now an insane close-up, I think you might be able to spot it. There is like a 0.1mm misalignment. Here on the wing, you can see it overhanging slightly. You can spot it here on the tail surfaces too, just on the left of the parts. But if I'm honest, it's hardly noticeable. As mentioned earlier, I'm sure there are kits out there with much worse alignment than that. But Beaker Models assures me that the tooling has been remade to remove that, so all the parts should be really well aligned for the retail versions of the kit. But yeah, whilst I round off this review, I'll throw some more close-ups on the screen. Some people on social media who've seen images of these parts have commented on how the panel lines and details look a little thick, but I think it's good to bear in mind that all the images I've shown you here have been really zoomed in, and the kit is actually really small. After painting, I seriously doubt the panel lines will look so big. Also, if you like putting a wash on your model, it means there's something actually for the wash to sit into. Generally though, bearing in mind this is a completely pre-production version of the kit, and I'm assured that there are changes that are going to make it even better, I'm really impressed. So impressed actually that I've already signed up for my pre-order on their website. I think I'd like to get a Spitfire and a BF-109. Oh, and uh, one of those hut sets so I can do a diorama as well. And those pre-order prices are really good at the moment. I'm not sure if they will stay that low at general release, so if you're interested, probably worth taking a look at their website now. I'll pop a link down below in the description. At the moment, I haven't been told when pre-orders will be fulfilled, so I guess we'll have to keep watching this space for now, but it's good to know that progress is certainly being made. And what about future plans? Well, I've been told that they are thinking of giving Kickstarter another go for the next aircraft in the collection. Possibly the Heinkel 111, BF 110, Defiant and Hurricane, which they are hoping will get a bigger following compared to last time, now that more people know about them and the work they are doing. There are even whispers of other projects. How exciting. Anyways, I think it's time to wrap this one up here. Despite being completely pre-production, I'm really impressed with what I've seen from this company, and I'm looking forward to the full release and any future products they have in the pipeline. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this quick look at this new kit in development, and also, I've been told that I'm allowed to keep this kit and give it a test build, so let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a video on that too. Shout out to my patrons and channel members for their extra support, which helps keep this channel going. Find out how you can get involved in the links in the description. Don't forget to do all that good YouTube stuff by clicking all those buttons under the video too. Well, not all of them, but at least some. Preferably the big red one. I'd appreciate that very much. Finally, a massive thank you to you for watching, and I will see you all on the workbench again next time.